In this video, we are gonna go ahead and get our users reducer to give us some users, and we're gonna render those out in our React component. Let's open up our users reducer and make some changes that we're gonna to need to get our application to work. So for our initial state, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and create some new initial state as rather than having a single user, we're gonna have multiple users. So let's just have users and it's just gonna be a blank array. I'm then gonna have a loading state and it's gonna be false to start off with. And I'm also gonna have an error, which is gonna be null. We can go ahead and get rid of this constant here. I'm just gonna change it to a let and I'm not gonna assign it to anything at the moment. So obviously as we are gonna have multiple users rather than just a single user back from the API, we are gonna to have to make a couple of little changes. So in our user pending, we're gonna have loading as true. We no longer have a status or a status class, so we can get rid of those. In our fetch users fulfilled, we no longer need to do this here as we're gonna have multiple users. So let's go ahead and assign our users to action.payload.data.results as that's gonna be an array of users back from the API. Let's set loading to false and pass our user in and we no longer need anything else there. So when our Ajax request gets rejected. Let's go ahead and set loading to false and set our error to equal action.payload.message as I believe that's where the error will appear. And that is everything we need to do for our users reducer to get multiple users back as an array into our state. So save that. Although I've just noted here that I'm passing in user whereas it now is users as it's an array rather than a singular user. So let's save that. Now our user reducer is up to date and working as I will expect it to for our application. Let's go over to our actions, which as you can see, I didn't rename. So let's rename that to users. And let's just quickly update this Ajax request here as obviously we don't want it to error and we want to get multiple users back rather than a singular user. So to get multiple users back from the random user.me API, all we need to do is pass a query specifying the results to equal however many results you would like. I'm just gonna ask for 10 as that's nice and simple and easy to use. So save that and let's head on back over to our users container and let's import that action from our actions folder. So it's gonna be from dot dot slash actions forward slash users. So we now have the Redux action, which is gonna fetch users for us and pass that new stuff to our users reducer, which is what we would like. So rather than having data and the word test, obviously really unhelpful, let's just set our data to equal our state and we'll check what that is in a second. But before we do that, I just wanna go ahead and introduce you to the next function we're gonna to pass to the React Redux Connect function. And again, this is gonna be a constant. And this time we're gonna map dispatch to props. So it's gonna be map dispatch to props. And this function takes our dispatch and it returns an object. And this object has a name. This is gonna be the prop in our React component. So you could call this whatever you like. I'm gonna call it fetch users because that's what we're doing. And this is gonna be a function. And this function is gonna pass dispatch, and then it's gonna dispatch our action. So what is this gonna do? Well, this is gonna map a property called fetch users, 
into our React component. And we can then call this fetch users property in our React component. And that is going to dispatch our fetch users action. So this is how we're going to make our Ajax request in our React component. We're going to pass a property called fetch users, which is a function that dispatches the action that we want to happen. Now we have our map dispatch to props function. We can go ahead and pass it into the connect function. So map dispatch to props. If you save that, we should now have in our React component a property called fetch users as well. Let's just go ahead and delete this component as we're going to have to have an ES6 class component here rather than a stateless functional component. So class users is going to extend and it's going to extend react.component. We're going to have a constructor as we're going to have some props. And let's just go ahead and call super to get our props into our component. And we'll then have a render function. And this is going to return. And we're going to return a div. And this div will just contain, just contain hello for now. So let's go ahead and use the react function component did mount and within this component let's go ahead and console.log out this dot props so we can see exactly what our props are at this current point let's bind this component did mount function to our actual component and later on I might show you a way that we don't have to do this using arrow functions but we'll come on to that later so export default and we're going to export our users so save this check everything's compiling correctly head on back to the browser refresh and you'll see we get hello and if you go ahead and open up your developer tools you'll see we've got an object here and if you open up that object you'll see we have data and we also have fetch users. And these are our props from our React component. So our object, our data object, which as you know, is our state, mapping our state to our props. It has the error loading and the users, which is our initial state. So we have mapped our state to our props via the connect function in our Redux container. And we've done that via the map state to props. So that takes any state from our reducers and maps it to our React component via the props. And you can call that whatever you want. We then have the fetch users function. And we've done that via map dispatch to props. And all we're doing is we're creating a function called fetch users. And in that function, we are dispatching our fetch users action. So let's go ahead and actually fetch some users. So open up your component again. And in the component did mount, Let's go ahead and use this dot props dot fetch users. Because as we know, that is one of our props. If you save that, head on back over to the browser and refresh. Let's just ignore that. And we've got an error, but let's just not worry about that for the moment. We'll come back to that in a second. So you'll see that now our action is being defined. And that's exactly what we want. Our action is happening and it's happening because we are calling the fetch users function, which is a property in our React component. And the reason it's a property in our React component is because we've mapped our dispatch to our props. So we've mapped the fetch users action dispatch to the prop fetch users in our React component. 
So the error is cannot read property length of undefined and users is not defined. So let's go ahead and work out what I've done incorrectly. And it's because I've called that user, I believe. So if you save that, make that users, save that. Let's refresh and see if that's the issue. And that was the issue. You can see our action gets dispatched and our new state now has an array of 10 users. So we've managed to map our Redux state, our Redux dispatching of actions to our React component. And in our React component, everything just comes in via the props and we just access stuff via props. And we can pass whatever we want into our React component via the state, via the map state to props, or we can even map dispatch to props. So as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. Once you have your map state to props, and if you're dispatching any actions, your map dispatch to props, you've used the connect function and you pass your react component to that connect function got your provider all set up. It's actually really simple and really easy to use. So in the next video, let's go ahead and make our application look a little bit nicer and actually render out the list of users so we can see the 10 users we get back from the API. And then we'll have a complete React and Redux application. So if you like this video, please like and comment. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.